Hey, today we are going to look at a very serious problem with open domain question answering data sets. Uh, basically, this paper explores uh, how many percentage of the, the test questions in the test data they are actually also duplicate in the training data set and then they found out around 30% of uh, test questions are also in the training data set and also for the answers they also have a lot of overlap it's like 60% of answers they also present in the training data set this is quite a serious issue but most people uh, didn't know that before until this work and uh, uh, they've also told us how much the model performers in those uh, duplicate questions or those non-duplicate questions they, their results finding was the model actually performed very poorly in the non-duplicate data set so most of those uh, uh, high performance actually came from those duplicate questions so that's a serious issue and he addressed uh, how should we fix them and this work is done by Facebook AI research and the uh, Univers University, University College London very interesting work and very important work uh, and if you are very interested in this kind of question answering domain this is the video uh, you will like to watch so yes that's definitely this paper about this paper like i just mentioned right and by the way if you would like to receive more videos like this and don't forget to subscribe uh, because your subscription is my best encouragement to make more videos like this and so yes this video uh, is like that so uh, this work is done by Facebook AI research and the University College London yeah quite a great job and what's open domain question answering there are actually two types of them the first type is open book uh, QA uh, it's very straightforward. It's like you ask a, a question to model, the model retrieve uh, relevant documents. They help him answer their questions from the corpus. Uh, for example, from Wikipedia, the model retrieve maybe 10 documents. Uh, they're supposed to answer their questions. Then model, you run a model, uh, another model to, to extract the answer. So this is open book question answering another is closed book question answering it's more brutal you just ask a direct question then the model needs to answer that directly so basically what happened to this kind of uh, closed book QA's uh, model store the knowledge in their parameters of the neural network so it should directly answer you from retrieving the knowledge in the parameters by the way if you are interested in learning more about open book question answering i have done video about that uh, explaining uh, the work done by google it's called realm it's an open question answering open book question answering instead of the r i will put it in the description down below and also info card so let's look at what data sets they investigate first so they investigated three data sets the first the first is web questions. It's a data set that from more than 50, 10 years ago. Uh, it's mining the, data, the search engine then uh, to find out the, the, the answers. The answers actually are from Freebase. It's Freebase entities. Freebase is like uh, ontology, they kind of things. They store a lot of different entities. So the answers are Freebase entities. So you cannot be like a free text form, they kind of thing. Okay, so this is web questions. Another is a trivia QA. It's like they scrubbing a lot of trivia websites, then uh, they contain the trivia question and trivia answers. So this is the second one, and they had a uh, much larger data size than web questions. Web questions are around a few few thousands, and a trivia QA is like uh, over. 10,000 is around like 50,000 the, the numbers yeah, if you are interested in that kind of details uh, look at look it up uh, in the paper they have a lot of uh, description about those uh, data sets and last one is open natural questions uh, 
it's actually a subset of natural equations. And uh, how they create natural equations is basically they get the search engine questions, then uh, ask uh, annotators to annotate the answers for that. And so it's the span in the document, retrieve document. So those are three different data sets, and the, these two data sets have much larger data size than the web questions. Okay, so the problem is actually why this kind of a duplication problem happened is because when we do machine learning, we usually separate data, uh, partition the data by like training data, validation development data, or you can call it validation data or test data set. Then uh, most people just use a random seat to separate them, like 80%, 10%, 10%, these kind of portions. Uh, but the problem is when those three data sets are created, uh, people just use a random split it. But there, indeed, there's no any direct duplicate uh, questions in there. But they contain a lot of uh, just a subtle different duplicate. For example, it's basically set two same questions in train, uh, one in training, one in test, but they just uh, differ from a few words, but basically they mean the same thing. So this kind of thing happen, and they are around 30% of these kind of questions duplicate. So that's why, because they just, uh, when they first created these data sets, they just randomly spill it. They didn't consider questions can be still duplicate, even they don't exactly match with each other, like by string, right? So there are two types of overlaps. The first one is called answer overlaps. Uh, it's not straightforward to really understand what this means, but basically this means very simple. But it's, what means like how to interpret the Im implications of this answer over overlap. Uh, this basically says uh, if your answers in your test questions also present in your training data, then you consider answer overlap. For example, uh, you probably want to ask, uh, where is baseball originally from? Uh, maybe this is a test question. So then the answer, the answer is the United States. Then United States is a answer in the one test question, right? Then in your training data set, you also have uh, a, a question called uh, which nation is ranked first in the basketball. The answer also United States. So it, in this case, we can because in both training and the, the test data, we have the question whose answer is the United States. Then you consider duplicate answers, but even their questions are very different. Different, right? And this kind of thing is to make sure uh, it's very hard to get an implication because United States is just a, such a common common uh, proper noun they should be everywhere it's very hard to prevent this kind of thing from duplicate but definitely you can argue if these answers never present in the training data then they will be probably harder for model right so it's like a, to differentiate the difficulty of model no so, sorry differentiate the difficulty of questions okay so so another one is like very straightforward the question overlap the question overlap basically mean uh, the question is the same but in here there's no exact exactly the same questions they overlap because they definitely apparently they when they created those data sets they did a kind of exactly match uh, deduplication so uh, there are a lot of questions they met. They, they are similar, very, very similar. They me semantically the same. So uh, they are, they, in this paper, they, the question overlap mean they kind of duplicate questions. And definitely if your question is duplicate, then your answer will also duplicate. So it's a, a subset of answer overlap. Right, so in, in this paper, when they say answer overlap that actually means the answer overlap without question overlap 
And when I say question overlap, it means question overlap also with answer overlap. Because when you overlap, when the questions overlap, your answer must overlap. Otherwise, it's not the same question. Okay, so now we know the definition. And let's see, uh, because the answer overlap, the definition is very clear. It's just the, the same answer. The question overlap is a little bit more trickier because uh, how to e extract those overlap questions it's actually very very tricky you can use a rule best to maybe to use like a Levistan distance AD distance to answer the similarity of questions let's say uh, Levistan distance is like 90 per 95% Levista uh, AD similar similarity is ninety five percent similar. Then you consider duplicate question, but you will have a lot of uh, like a false positive because uh, maybe when sometimes you change one word, then the question just means totally different thing, but sometimes don't right. And you also can train the classifier to classify the similarity of question, but they will also have a lot of false positive. Uh, false negative that kind of things so that's why they don't use these two methods rules or classifiers instead they use uh, manual annotation simple but most uh, effective right so they annotate 1000 question and answer pairs from for each data set that's how they do and they found out there are around 27% to 33% of questions they had a duplication in training data set and also uh, there are a lot of cases where one test questions have multiple duplicate uh, questions in the training data and like in this open natural question data set they on average one test question will have 2.8 duplicate uh, questions in the training data set for me it's insane because you have so many so many overlapped questions then it definitely inflates the model performance by a significant margin right because model already seen this question in uh, training there's no reason it cannot answer it in the test time right in the inference time Okay, so this is like uh, the more details uh, of that. So let's see uh, the equation overlap here. Uh, around six fifty-seven to sixty-three percent of or seventy-one percent of them are overlap. But I honestly don't care answer overlap too much because I don't think that's a serious problem. Just like I mentioned the the United States example, it's just a very tri trivial turn they should. They're supposed to be everywhere. So it's very, very, it's, I will not say this category is that is important. But why care most is question overlap because the same questions uh, in the training and the test, they just not very good way to evaluate the model performance. But as you can see, on average is around 70% of this kind of overlap happen. And it's all, not only happening in one data set, it's like these three data sets have very similar distribution of question overlap I would say this is a really serious problem in terms of evaluating the model performance so the implications for modeling there are three different levels of uh, modeling difficulty the first one is very uh, straightforward if the question shows uh, a question shows up in the training and test data then it's supposed to be the easiest one to answer. So it's kind of a question memorization, question answer pair memorization. The model, if model sees this question and answer in the training training time, then it's supposed to answer it correctly in the test time, right? So this is the easiest way, it's just a memorization. And another is like a answer classification. Uh, I actually don't really get this like term mean. This is the what they define in, in the uh, in the paper, uh, what this means is basically if this answer shows up in the in the training data and also in the in the test data question, then you consider the questions the and the answer classification. 
So they they the argument is like the model just uh, try to classify the answer because the answer model already know the answer. They they just uh, try to classify which answer is that. Okay, not really straightforward for, to me, right? But uh, last one is very straightforward. It's a QA generalization. It's like the novel question with novel answer. The question that has never been seen in the test in the training time, that, and also this answer has never been seen before. So it's very very uh, novel question and answer pair. And if model can answer this correctly, and they consider this model is very capable. So here comes comes to the most important contribution of this paper. They annotate. 100 uh they basically previously they annotated 1000 uh equation answer pairs right then they found out there's uh, a lot of uh a lot of overlap and they also further annotate How, what kind of overlap are there because we know they overlapped but we don't know how they overlapped then they further annotate 100 Question answer pair the 100 questions they overlap then see What kind of overlaps are there? So they found out uh, they are actually they categorize this as three different Category different level of over overlapping the first one is Simple duplicate It's basically just the differ by maybe one or two words. It's very very uh, Syntactically similar, definitely also semantically similar. And uh, another one is like a paraphrase duplicate. It's like they are the same questions, but uh, they got para paraphrase a lot. So only 15 per 14% of them, the questions are this kind of. And the last one is most difficult duplicate. It's like very so sophisticated. They mean the same thing, they mean the same questions, but it just looks so different and there are only five percent of uh, duplicates are the in this category and this is here's example for simple duplicates who played pink in pink floyd the world and another question is uh, who played pink in the movie the world they are basically very similar questions and everyone can tell they are the same questions and another one is like more sophisticated sophisticated uh, like this the first one, uh, like super long questions, and second one is l even longer, right? But they actually means uh, same thing. They actually are same questions, but you need to really, really analyze them to understand them. And definitely, they have experts who understand this. Here are some randomly selected overlap questions. Then we 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 look at the first two rows. The first one: Who plays Max voice in a uh, Goofy movie. Who does Max voice in a goofy movie? They basically only change a verb from place to does, and they just very subtle change, and it's definitely exactly means the same thing. And another example: When will the twenty eighteen Oscar nomination be announced? When are the Oscar nominations for? Uh, 2018 un announced basically just change the, the 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 way they ask questions it's change the tenses not much different so this is why 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 this uh issue is important because if this kind of questions in the test time and show up shows up in test time shows up in training time then your model cannot be evaluated uh, properly right so uh, here we we comes to experiment time. Very exciting. Uh, so this is the first ex experiment they do uh, for the open book question answering. Uh, there are a few state of the art models. A very very good model. Uh, every three of them all are neural network best and uh, mostly like a sequence to sequence uh, model is like you you s input your question answer. Sequence and uh, your answer will be another decoding sequence. And there's also another one is uh, very cool uh, for fusion 
kind of uh, network. It basically retrieve the top one one hundred documents. Then fusion basically to combine uh, one hundred document as one document and use this as input for the model. So model can uh, pay attention to uh, these one hundred documents all together, then find out the answer. It's a pretty cool way to do that, and it's very very near. Uh, state of the art result. It used to be state of the art, I believe. Then you you find it. The, the, this is the total accuracy, uh, and you can see uh, if we break it down to question overlap, answer overlap, and the no overlap, and the models. Three of these models can do very well in the question question overlap, but doing very poorly uh, in no overlap category. They, their performance in terms of uh, exact match accuracy is like drop 50%, like 50%. Basically, it's, it's crazy. It, like drop like crazy. If they never seen this question and answer before, it barely can answer the question. And for, for the answer overlap only, that's also a very significant drop. It's like 30% drop. So you can see that how much inflection there is in this kind of a Due to this overlapping, and also for trivia QA, you also see the similar phenomena. Uh, also, drop in the question overlap category and uh, no overlap category. Uh, model performance drop like around fifty percent, fifty percent. Very serious. Same thing happen in the web questions. It drops so much. Um. Just to tell us how serious this problem uh, is, and we should really be aware of that. And another uh, experiment is for closed book um, question answering, and the part used to be the state of the art uh, or near state of the art. Uh, it's a, also the model they proposed by Facebook AI, and another is T5, it's Google's model, a super large language model, and it definitely store a lot of knowledge in the its parameters is 11 billion parameters in this neural network and definitely it used to be uh, like still yeah, in terms of uh, closed book question answering but now definitely uh, still uh, is held by GPT-3 which have 175 billion parameters it's huge and as you can see in this test uh, even a very very good model uh, T5 uh, still can uh, uh, perform well in the no overlap category you can they can very perform very very well in the, the question that's overlap basically it's memorization test right and you you all know neural network is new networks are very very good at memorizing thing and if this question ever be asked in the test time in the training time then he most likely can answer it correctly and if this uh, it's no there's no overlap questions then like answers overlap only then the performance just drops so much so much and like the bar model barely can answer the question that's novel question and also with novel answer and for for the uh, trivia QA also have a similar result also drops a lot barely can do anything in the no overlap category same thing goes to web questions. You see so much inflection. Uh, it's caused by a question overlap, and the no overlap questions you can do, you can do barely anything, right? To compare with those sophisticated deep learning models, they also propose the very simple nearest neighbor models uh, as baseline. Yeah, so in this uh, nearest neighbor model, you will first have your input question, your question, what's the tallest mountain in the world? Then you will have a pair, a lot of pairs of questions, like what uh, channel explains deep learning, and the answer is deep learning explainer. And you will have other pair, what's the highest mountain on earth, answers Mount Everest. And definitely a lot of uh, different question answer pairs can be mediums or more than that. Then you use the question similarity uh, algorithm to make sure the most similar question 
uh, and when the question is similar, then answer should be like correct, right? So in this case, uh, if your algorithm is good, then you should select the what's the highest mountain on Earth. By the way, they also have uh, proposed two different ways to make sure uh, question similarity. The first one is like very typical, very classic way to to make sure the text similarity, which is TFIDF. It it doesn't require any training, and it actually achieves a very decent result. And another is to use the deep learning model to generate uh, text embeddings, then you use the concise similarity uh, to make sure the two uh, questions similarity. Then uh, both of way uh, have very decent result. And the reason they want to do this is they want to prove uh, those kind of uh, memorization questions uh, is very trivial. The, even this kind of TFIDF can achieve a very decent result. So uh, after you make sure the similarity, you will select the, first, the most similar question, which is what's the highest mountain on Earth? Then the answer is mountain Everest. So you can answer this question. But by the way, this uh, question and answer pairs or in the training data. If it doesn't exist in your training, training data, then you will not be able to answer that. So yeah, your questions got answered. And here are the experiment results. Use those nearest neighbor models to compare with those sophisticated models. And as you can see here, it's very interesting. In the in the uh, question open natural question case, uh, the the, the the dense, which is embedding based model, actually outperform the the bar model by around two percent, which is crazy because he actually didn't really fine tune on the data. He only probably just used the off the shelf model, like a bar model, to generate embedding, but did not fine tune. And also in this kind of nearest the neighbor model, you cannot really answer if the 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 question and answer the does now overlap in the training and the test data. And also, even it's just the answer got overlap, it cannot be answered. Uh, this is ex so expected. So uh, we just look at the question overlap category. And in the tri trivial QA, uh, the craziest thing is even a TFIDF, such a simple model, requires zero training, uh, can outperform the used to be a st state of the art bar model. Yeah, outperform like by 1.5 percent. It's insane. And you know, not to mention the, the embedding based model is 81 percent accuracy. Even outperform some uh, open book model, uh, which they can retrieve documents to answer the question. But it, but even in the, in that kind of setup, they still cannot compare the very simple nearest neighbor model. So in the web QA, uh, it's also like that. Uh, the embedding based model can outperform this uh, DPR model, even they this model open book. And yeah, that's really, really mind blowing. Uh, it just uh, tells us how serious this uh, uh, train test overlap affect the model performance. So yeah, what did we learn today? Uh, we learned there are 60% test set questions they uh, t sorry 60 percent test set answers they overlap and more importantly they are 30 percent of test set question they have at least one duplicate questions in training data set that's very uh, serious then how sh can we solve this uh, this paper suggests that we should not just uh, like searching for one single metric which is like f1 score or exact match accuracy to make sure those uh, question answering uh, performance. We should do this kind of categorization of the data, then use those more like behavior driven evaluation, like how they uh, break down the data to question overlap, answer overlap, and the novel uh, questions, then to see how you can, your model can do. And by right, the more the, the 
if the models are very powerful, they should be also uh, to answer the novel questions very well because that's our goal. We want to train a model that's very generalizable. They should be able to answer unseen questions. Okay, so that's the summary for this paper. Yeah, and we have reached the end of this video. Yeah, if you like the video, give it a like. And uh, if you would like to receive more deep learning videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. Your subscription is my greatest support. And I also put some other question answering uh, related videos in the description down below. And until next time, take care. I will see you in the next video.